Welcome to TCTV. I am Matt Willis. And I'm Angela. In our first story, a suicide bombing in Afghanistan killed at least nine people early Tuesday morning. Afghan police say that a suicide bomber was driving a small sedan and rammed into a minibus. The minibus was believed to be carrying foreign aviation workers near the Kabul airport. An independently made anti-Muslim video caused massive protests around the Middle East this past week. Protests that originally started at the U.S. Embassy in Egypt have now spread to many other cities. Demonstrators have been defacing U.S. flags, becoming violent, and in some scenarios, burning in American buildings like fast food restaurants. Many protesters want the filmmaker to be punished for his actions. Mitt Romney said Monday that he stands by his message in a secretly taped video in which he is heard saying that 47% of Americans will vote for President Obama because they are victims and dependent upon government. Romney also said his comments were not elegantly stated and spoken off the cuff during a fundraiser months, months ago. As soon as fall 2013, a new outpatient medical complex may begin rising from the huge empty lot that was once the Midville Mall. This construction will bring many jobs to the area, put use to the empty parking lot that stands there now, and eventually provide a community with another health care service. Look out! Farmers are now being targeted for technology. A free mobile app developed by researchers in Penn State's College of Agricultural Sciences can help dairy farmers manage financial planning by helping them track fee feed costs and income. The app can even compare feed costs across the country in various locations. Hi, I'm Marte with Till Sports. <coughs> this past Saturday, the Till football team defeated Geneva 21-14. The win broke a previous 24-game losing streak that dates back to 2009. Tim Taylor, a defensive end for the Tomcats, earned a pack defensive player of the game for his efforts in the win. The Tomcats battle this Saturday at home first WNJ. TCTV reporter Kendall DeLashman was able to talk to Coach Riser about the game. I am Tony Zhang here at the Alumni Stadium where the past weekend the Tomcat won 21-14 against the Geneva Golden Tornado. This is the first win since 2009 for the Tomcats. Here is the follow-up with the Coach Riser at the... It's Kendall DeLashman here, standing here with Coach Riser after the big win over Geneva on Saturday. Uh, Coach, why don't we just talk about what was going through your head on that tremendous play by Cody McClellan to Baron Group? Well, you know, we, we had uh, gone into overtime. We had our uh, had the ball first, and we knew that we needed points. Um, right before that play, we, we thought we had a touchdown with uh, Peter Garza in the end zone, but uh, unfortunately the defensive back made a nice play, and the ball came out. So uh, we were hoping just to get three points out of the out of the field goal. And, and um, when I saw the snap come back, I was like, oh, no, here we go again. And, and uh, But Cody was able to pick it up, uh, made a great play. Uh, Baron made a... a an important decision and going out into the end zone and it's something that we practice we don't practice it quite the way it happened but um, you know Baron was able to get into the end zone get open and Cody somehow some way was able to give him the ball so we were we were really excited about that. Coach Rise and following the win from Kendall Delashman, TCTV. Here is a replay of this past weekend's winning touchdown scored by junior tight end Baron Group. This has been Liz Williams reporting for TCTV. Now back to the news desk. Hours after beating the Broncos on Monday Night Football, Michael Turner was arrested and, ch and charged with a DUI. Turner, who was arrested about 5 a.m. Tuesday morning and was also charged with speeding, the Falcons are yet to say anything about the incident, but, they, but say they will speak once as they talk to Turner first. Kelly Barzak of Warren, Ohio, has been named this week's Pac Women's Volleyball Player of the Week because of her outstanding performance at the Gator Invitational at Allegheny College. She helped the team to a 5-0 record and tournament victory. The team competes in their season opener on September 19th when they face St. Vincent here at Beagley Gymnasium. After a Sunday night football loss last week, 
the Pittsburgh Steelers rebounded to defeat the New York Jets 27 to 10. The win puts the Steelers at one and one on the season. This upcoming week, they travel to Oakland to take on the Raiders. Following that is their bye week. Olympic and X Games gold medalist Sean White has been charged with vandalism this past Sunday in Tennessee. According to the reports, a drunken White pulled a fire alarm which caused a whole hotel to evacuate. When further investigated, White's room was also found to be destroyed. After being released on bail, it was announced that his court date will be October 10th. As it was for most of last year's college football season, once again, Alabama and LSU are back to one and two in the BCS standings. This year, much like last, the two teams are picked to again play for the national championship in January. With a lot of season to be played again, anything can happen, but everyone knows the strength of these teams is astonishing. Oh, and over to the entertainment segment. This is Hannah with your entertainment segment. Britain's royal family is going to take legal steps against the photographer who took topless pictures of Prince William's wife, the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate. Her pictures were taken while she was on a guest house terrace in France for vacation. Lawyers for the palace would file a complaint with French prosecutors on Monday against the unidentified photographer or photographers involved. The snaps of Kate were published by French entertainment magazine Closer. TV series of HBO Game of Thrones won the best special, special, uh, special effects and best costumes for a series at the Creative Arts Emmy Awards. HBO received the leading 17 Creative Arts Emmys, followed by CBS with 13, PBS with 11. Other 26 categories and Emmys like acting, writing, and directing are going to be broadcasted ABC at 8 p.m. EDT next Sunday. The singer, rapper, Nicki Minaj, and country crooner, Keith Urban, will be the new judges on the next season of American Idol. Urban described the show for its great history of producing real stars. The announcement also fixed Randy Jackson's place in the show. He is the only remaining judge of the series. The 12th season of the show will air in January 2013. Lady Gaga got a new tattoo at the launch of, launch of her new perfume brand, Fame. She went inside a huge perfume bottle, which was a replica of her fragrance, and received the tattoo on her neck. Celebrity attendees include Yoko Ono, Marc Jacobs, Paris Hilton, Michael Strahan, Jason Wu, and Lindsay Lohan. The pop star also debuted her Lady Gaga film, which, wait, which was a short film for the perfume in collaboration with director Stephen Klein. American socialist Paris Hilton is dating Spanish model River Vipiri. It is reported that 21-year-old model, the top star, fell in love with each other when they were attending the Marlin Gobble, Glo wait, Gobble Shut, wait, yeah, <laughs> the Lincoln Center during New York's Fashion Week. In July, Paris insisted that she was enjoying being single. However, it turns out that they were hanging as much as they can during the show and after they became a couple. Paul Thomas Anderson's new movie, The Master, was a great hit in the opening weekend, smashing records just a handful, on just a handful of screens. The Winston Company release made $729,745 in five theaters in New York and Los Angeles for a record selling setting pre-screen average of $145,949, according to the Sunday Studio Estimates. The Master, which was largely anticipated by its audience, won several of the top awards at the Venice Film Festival. I'm Hannah. I'm Hannah. Back to the news desk. In TL News, the college's annual Community and Military Appreciation Day celebration will be held on Saturday, September 22nd, beginning at 11.30 a.m., with a variety of activities. This year's feature is the Mobile Vest Center. Any active or retired military personnel with a military ID or, or in uniform will also receive free admission to the TL football game beginning at 1.30. September is National Hispanic Awareness Month. 
TCTV reporter spoke with Multicultural Director Joe Webb about the events planned on campus to celebrate this event. September is Hispanic Heritage Month. Here at Till College, we will be celebrating with a guest speaker. Here's Vaughn with more of the story. I'm Vaughn Dozo. I'm here with Director of Multicultural Affairs, Joe Webb. Thanks, Joe, for your time. I've got a couple questions to ask you. First, I want to ask you, what is the main purpose of Hispanic Heritage Month, and what should we like? What should we learn and expect to hear from the speaker? Well, the main purpose of Hispanic Heritage Month, especially the programs that I'm doing here at Till, is to help educate students, faculty, and staff on the Hispanic culture and how um, Hispanic culture, how, they, how different Hispanics identify themselves. And uh, it's always good, especially in today's society, to learn about different cultures and how different cultures identify themselves through um, religious beliefs and, and whatnot. With our guest speaker that's coming in for Hispanic Heritage Month, he's going to talk about his life growing up. Um, so the title is From the Streets to the Classroom, Education Equal Respect. He was an illegal immigrant coming to the United States. Um, his family had been deported, so basically he didn't have family over here and he got caught up in the, in the gang life and how a lot of Hispanics who, who come over to the United States illegally um, get involved in, in gang and street life and how someone had took him under his wing, got him an education, and now he's at where he's at um, through education and how that really changed his life around. So a lot of it deals with two, if you're not familiar with the DREAM Act. Um, it's a new law that has been passed um, through the Obama administration on allowing illegal immigrants to go to college, um, especially uh, as children coming over here and then why penalize them for not being um, illegal, but trying to help them gain that citizenship and, and continue their education through higher ed. So a lot of this program deals with that and some current issues that go on in the Hispanic community. All right, well, thank you, Joe. I appreciate your time and everything. All right, thank you. All right, I'm Vaughn Dozel, and now back to the desk. As a reminder, on Wednesday, September 19th at 4 p.m., please join us in the LHR for a presentation with our guest speaker and free food catered by Capadres. Now back to the desk. Two Teal athletic teams brought home significant wins the past weekend. The football team clinched their first win in over two years in a dramatic fashion, and the volleyball team brought home the elephant tournament title. The victory bell had its work cut out for, the week, for this weekend. For quite some time Saturday, all across campus, ding ding rang strong. Hopefully the bell will be heard all year long. Thank you for watching uh, TCTV. Have a good evening. Thank you.